onto the final steps of the Prusa Mark IV build now, and this is a rather large chapter with lots to cover. So let's crack straight on with the wire carriage and heat bed assembly. As normal, start by retrieving your Y-axis electronics bag, as well as the Y-axis 3D printed parts from their respective boxes. With this to hand, we'll start by preparing the heat bed, taking extra care with the pre-installed sensor wires, orientate the heat bed so that the connections in the top corner are visible. Notice the markings beneath each, the left GND and the right VCC. We'll be connecting the heat bed cables to these, one black and one red. Notice the cables have a label on one end. For this next step, we'll use the opposite end without the label. So proceed to place the black wire above the left connector, labelled GND. Remember we're using the end without the label here, before inserting a single M3 by 10 screw complete with an M3 washer. Hold the screw and carefully attach a M3 nylon lock nut onto the opposite side, while tightening just enough to keep everything in place for the moment. You can use the universal wrench to hold the nut as you screw into place, although do not tighten down too much just yet, as we'll need some adjustment space. With that done, repeat this procedure for the second red wire, using the end of the cable that's not labelled, and using a single M3 by 10 screw, complete with washer, and an M3 nut to hold in place. At this point, double check the black cable is to the left GND connector, and the red to the right VCC connector. This is very important. The cable cover, which we'll install next, needs the connectors to be slightly inclined towards each other. Onto the cable cover next, where we insert three M3 nuts into the shaped openings. I found these very tight, so get them into position and use the screw pulling technique if needed to ensure the nuts are right inside the recesses in the printed part. Before pushing the heat bed thermistor cable that was pre-installed on the heat bed through the bottom of the cable cover. We have one piece of nylon filament remaining, which we now use to insert into the hole in the heat bed cable cover. Don't let the nylon filament stick out too much on the other side. Also when inserting the nylon filament, ensure that the filament does not damage the thermistor cables under the printed part. With that done, slide the cable guide under the heat bed cable connectors we just installed, and secure with a single M3 by 10 screw from the top. Tighten the screw firmly. Note that the curve of the filament should bend upwards. You'll find one final textile sleeve remaining at this point, which we now use to wrap the cable bundle, including the nylon filament, sliding the sleeve as far forward towards the heat bed as possible, before we attach the top cover. And, leaving a little slack with the thermistor cable, secure the cover into place using two M3 by 10 screws, both going directly into the M3 nuts we previously installed. This needs to be quite tight, enough so that there's no gap left between the two cover pieces, taking care not to pinch any cables in between. We're going to assemble the Y carriage next, and we'll begin by preparing our bearings. The process is the same as before here, so after wiping the bearings down, proceed to grease the insides of all bearings, exactly as we've done earlier, taking care not to go crazy with the grease of course. With bearings ready, grab a bearing clip, insert an M3 by 8 screw into either end, before inserting a rubber pad, followed by the plastic pad, and repeat the same process on the remaining two bearing clips. The orientation is important here, so take note of the order of both pads, rubber inserted first, then plastic second. Back to the underside of our Y carriage now, where you'll notice the three recesses for the bearing clips. Starting with the single side, place the clip down into position, and tighten both screws, just enough to grab the threads for now and keep the clip in place, before sliding in one of the three prepared bearings. Making sure to align the bearing so that it's centred on the bearing clip. Looking through one end of the bearing, make sure it's orientated so that the row of balls are equal on both sides, in an X shape. Maintain the bearing position and tighten both screws a little further, just barely to maintain its position and orientation. We will tighten the screws firmly later on. Double check bearing position to ensure it's centred. 
as well as orientation. We're going to repeat the same process on the opposite side, so place the two bearing clips into position before pushing the bearings into place. Again, orientate the bearings so that the row of balls are lined up correctly. In essence, this ensures the rods that go through the middle rest on two rows of balls rather than just one. Although unlike the previous bearing, position the bearings closer to the center of the wire carriage. The bearings shouldn't touch the edge of the pocket, but alignment is important here. Proceed carefully and make sure that both bearings are as close to the center of the wire carriage as possible and do not touch any pocket edge. Just like the first, maintain the bearings position and slightly tighten the screws, just enough to maintain the position and orientation of the bearings for now. We will tighten the screws firmly later on. So that's our wire carriage now prepared, and time to insert the two remaining metal rods. Proceed to insert the two remaining rods into the bearings already in place. Be very careful here, the rods need to go through as smooth and as straight as possible so as to not lose any of the small ball bearings from inside. With both rods in place we can now go ahead and tighten all screws on the bearing clips down so that they're nice and secure. Bear in mind the rods need to slide through the bearings completely smoothly. If you feel any resistance then loosen the bearing clips off a little until the rods travel smooth. This is particularly more noticeable with the dual bearing side. Next we'll prepare our 3D printed wire axis rod holders. We're going to insert square nuts onto these, so use a small allen key to clean out the recesses before inserting two M3 square nuts into the side. These need to go right down into place. You may find it easier to use the supplied needle nose pliers to get started, although take care not to damage the plastic, before switching to the allen key to push down into place, far enough so that the holes are lined up nicely. Repeat the same process on all remaining rod holders, two M3 square nuts into each rod holder, followed by one in the end of each, so three in total. Once done, proceed to install a rod holder onto the end of each rod. Note that with the carriage still upside down at this point, the rod holders should have the insert nuts visible, and the holes on each holder pointing inwards. Once confirmed, with the wire carriage now flipped so it's flat side up and with the rods beneath, lower the assembly down onto the bed of the frame so that the rods are between the front and rear plates. This needs to be orientated so that the side with two bearings is on the left and the single bearing on the right. We're going to secure the rod holders to the frame now, so with the rod holder in position, proceed to secure into place with two M3 by 10 screws. Note the orientation of the rod holder here, the hole in the holder should be facing upwards. Proceed to secure both front rod holders into place. Tighten each pair of screws equally, but not completely. They'll be tightened later on. With these in place, insert another M3 by 10 screw into the holes we left facing upwards in order to tighten and grip onto the rod. Now repeat the same process at the back end of the carriage too. So secure the rod holder to the frame with M3 by 10 screws without fully tightening. Then insert the M3 by 10 screws into the holes in the top and tighten. With those in place, move the carriage back and full. It should move freely and smoothly in either direction with very little friction. Once confirmed, move the carriage fully to the front plate before tightening all screws in the front rod holders, after which proceed to move the carriage all the way to the back and tighten the rod end screws here too. Once complete, again move the carriage back and forth to ensure it's still free and smooth. So with the carriage now in place, it's time to get the wire belt into position, so we can attach the carriage to the wire axis motor we installed very early in the build. To do this, grab the two 3D printed wire belt tensioners as shown here. Note both parts are not identical. In particular, notice how one part has an oval hole in the side, while the other has a hexagonal hole. Starting with the hexagonal hole part, insert a single M3 lock nut all the way in. Use one of the longer M3 by 40 screws from the opposite end to pull the nut into place if need be, and remember to remove the screw once done. Now take one end of the wire belt and push it into the belt holder. Note the orientation of the belt. The teeth are facing towards the edge of the holder. Secure it by inserting and tightening a single M3 by 10 screw. 
Next, lean the printer onto the right side, so against the power supply unit, so that it's easier to gain access to the bottom, and then using another M3x10 screw, fix the wire bed holder to the wire carriage. Note we're using the leftmost hole in the center of the wire carriage. Now guide the wire axis belt around the wire axis motor pulley, making sure the belt is inside the frame, not underneath it, as in the example you see here. After which we can take the free end of the wire belt, now coming from the pulley, and push it into the groove in the second wire belt tensioner, so the one with the oval shaped hole, and once all the way in, secure it with a single M3 by 10 screw, ensuring the screw sits flush with the outer edge. Now reach for the final metal pulley and insert a pin all the way through. Take the free end of the belt and guide it around the pulley, after which we insert the belt with the pulley into the wire belt idler on the rear of the front plate, installed from the frame construction, up from the bottom. Finally, take a single M3x10 screw and secure the second tensioner into position, opposite the first. If it doesn't reach, it may be necessary to remove the first tensioner and reposition the belt a tooth back to provide more space on this side. Either way, do not over tighten the screw. We will adjust the exact position later on with belt tensioning, so ensure it can move side to side for now. Now insert an M3x40 screw into the wire belt tensioner, hidden just above the belt, and tighten it until the screw reaches the nut in the opposite part. Time to set belt tension now, so move the wire carriage all the way to the back. Using a finger, push the belt down. A medium force should be needed to squish the belt until both parts touch. You can change the belt tension by adjusting the long M3x40 screw on the bottom of the wire carriage. Alternatively, as with the X-axis belt, use the handy Prusa smartphone app to double check your belt tension. After you set the correct belt tension, tighten up the M3x10 screw on the bottom to fix the wire belt tensioner in place. Finally, we need to align the belt lengthways. To do this, simply make sure that both the top and bottom part of the belt are completely parallel. If not, adjust the belt position by releasing both screws on the Y-axis motor pulley and slightly move it to either side until you reach the best position before tightening both screws on the pulley. And that's our Y carriage now complete. Move the carriage back and forth slowly and ensure everything is nice and smooth. And once confirmed, we can proceed to installing the heat bed. So we begin by installing 8 M3x6 screws in the outer holes on the wire carriage. Do not tighten them completely, a few turns are enough for now. Firstly just to get them in place, and secondly because we need to leave room for the expansion joints to slide into position, which is what we'll do next. When it comes to the joints, slide into position from the side. It's important to make sure the expansion joints are correctly orientated. There is a recess with approximately the same shape as the expansion joint, and the joint must fit into that recess. In essence, they always slide in from the side. Once in place, maintain the position and tighten the M3x6 screw using the 2mm Allen key, repeating the same across all 8 joints, before a quick visual check to ensure they are all sitting within the recess. Finally, before we place the heat bed into position, place a single spacer on top of the center hole in the wire carriage, and we can then carefully lower the heat bed into place on top of the carriage, taking care to orientate the heat bed so that the cables previously installed are facing the rear left corner. With the bed in place, secure with a single M3x14 screw in the center, although do not tighten down just yet. Before we do that, insert M3x4 screws into the remaining holes all around the heat bed, so these will just go into the expansion joints we just installed. Again, just get these in place for now, do not fully tighten the screws yet. With all screws now in place, we can tighten down, gently but firmly, in the following sequence. First, the center screw, followed by the four side edge screws, and finally the four corner screws. Okay, so with our heat bed now securely in place, we'll go ahead and get the heat bed cables plugged in and finished off. So around the back side of the printer, we have our heat bed cables complete in their textile sleeve, as well as the nylon filament inside, which guides the cables up and away from other components. 
begin by pushing all cables through the square opening on the rear side of the electronics chassis. Although note that the filament pokes through the circular hole right below the square opening. Place the black heat bed cable on the left terminal, just above the power terminals, and secure it with the terminal screw. Likewise, place the red heat bed cable on the right terminal, before securing with the terminal screw. Finally, connect the heat bed thermistor cable to the electronics board into the port just beside the red heat bed cable. Time to neaten and finish up with the board now, so proceed to install the single 3D printed cable holder to the rear side of the chassis just here, covering the heat bed cable opening. Note that the heat bed cable bundle should be facing upwards. Tighten firmly with two M3x6 screws. Before we seal up the electronics board, double check all connections carefully using the diagram displayed here. It's very important that all the power cables are correctly orientated, checking all motor connections too, as well as ensuring all screws are tight. Once verified we can begin to seal the box, starting with the lower 3D printed cover. Push two M3x10 screws through the available holes, and then line up with the two available threaded holes in the electronics box taking care to ensure there is no other cable in the way for the screws and the cover, and secure the cover by tightening both M3x10 screws until snug. Finally, align the metal cover over the chassis, and secure with four M3x6 screws. As a last step, the Mark IV does come with wireless capabilities, and this is via a small Wi-Fi module found within some small black protective packaging. Just like with other electronics, hold by its edges and ensure you are very careful when handling and connecting the module to avoid any damage. This plugs into the 8 hole slot in the side of the electronics box. Make sure the part is correctly orientated as demonstrated here, after which we can cover the module with a plastic piece and secure with a single M3x6 screw until snug. And that's it. The printer is now fully built and complete, so off mine goes to its new home, where we can snap on a steel sheet, which is magnetic and lines up with the two pins at the rear of the heat bed, and then construct the spool holder, by simply holding the central part and pushing in and twisting both handles onto each side a quarter turn. This can then clip into the middle on the top frame, while making sure the spool holder is inclined towards the back of the printer. New with the Mark IV is a filament guide, which can also be installed at this point. Prepare by inserting two M3 nuts into the marked openings on the bottom side. And now insert the two included PTFE tubes into the marked openings. And fix the tubes in place with two M3x10 screws from the opposite side. Finally, insert the third M3 nut into the opening on the bottom side. Before attaching the filament guide onto the spool holder, it should click in between the top two ribs pointing upwards. Fix the guide in place using a single M3 by 18 screw. Prusa Mark IV build complete. At this point it's a good idea to head over to the Prusa website and download the latest stable firmware release. Transfer the downloaded file to the root of a USB device, the drive included with your printer is perfectly fine, and then insert the drive into the side USB port on the printer before powering up. The printer will detect and apply the firmware update should it be needed. After which the setup wizard will begin, which takes the system through a variety of self-tests in order to check and validate all the important components of the printer. The whole process takes a few minutes, while some parts of the wizard require direct user interaction, so going from fan checks, through to checking each axis, nozzle and load cell sensor checks, and a new gearbox alignment, which does require some user interaction. This is specific for user-built printers and isn't part of pre-assembled factory units. Finally, after calibration of the filament sensor, we're done, and as long as you follow the guide closely, your unit should pass all tests through to completion. On an ending note, if there's one optional accessory I was to recommend, it would certainly be a silicon sock for the heat block and nozzle. Available in a range of colours, the sock I have here push fits to perfection over the heat block. This relatively small upgrade does bring multiple advantages, including keeping the heat block and nozzle insulated, 
ensuring it isn't affected by the part cooling fan. In addition, less heat radiates from the heat block too, resulting in a cooler environment and better part cooling for the actual print. Above all else, it will help keep the heat block clean, since plastic will not stick to it anymore, reducing the chances of filament blobs and fouled prints in general. Note that when using a sock like this, you need to let the printer know by enabling it within Settings, Hardware, and selecting the option for Nextruder Silicon Sock. I'll leave a link to this particular silicon sock in the description box beneath this video, a relatively cheap accessory, but highly recommended. Either way, your printer is now complete and you're ready to print your very own 3D plastic models, functional parts, or anything else you can think of.